to Lead Millions podcast with visibility coach Crystal Henry. Discover our guest strategies and delve into their journeys to limitless success and inspiration. Let's enter the Made to Lead Millions zone. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to the Made to Lead Millions podcast where the ultimate destination is where inspiration merges with empowerment, propelling you to unprecedented heights of success. I am so super excited to introduce you to my guest tonight, but you know what I do. We have a little prayer. I'll give you a couple of announcements, and then we will dive into this amazing show. It's going to be excellent, 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 so you don't want to miss out. Lean in, grab a friend, a family member, and get ready for this amazing episode of Made to Lead Millions. I am your visibility coach, Crystal Henry, and let's pray and give God some glory. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your name. We praise you. We thank you for your goodness, God. We ask you, Lord God, to bless this time that we have together. And Father, I am thrilled about what you are doing in 2023. Father, we thank you that half the year is over, but you are doing great and mighty things for us. So God, tonight, have your way. Bless us in a great way. In Jesus' name, I do pray and ask it all. Amen and amen again. Y'all, I need you to join me every Thursday at 1030 Central Standard Time, 1130 Eastern Standard Time for the Crystal Henry Show. You will get inspired. You'll get many recipes of success in every episode. So make sure you tune in on DeKalb 25 in Greater Atlanta, Georgia. And also check me out on the Earth Channel and the Weekend Channel. So, and I also need you to do something else for me. I need you to connect with me. Go to crystalhenry.net. And you can connect with me on all my social media outlets. There's great inspiration right on the website. And if you are looking to be in the Made to Lead Millions magazine or a guest on this podcast show, go to crystalhenry.net for more information. So with that being said, I'm so super excited. And I want to make sure that I have a lot of time So I'm going to introduce tonight's amazing guest. We are going to experience one of the most amazing presidential candidates. We will be talking to an American businessman, a government advisor, and someone who just had a son on the 4th of July. We are going to learn a little bit about the real man. We're going to learn about the businessman. We're going to learn about the man who loves God and more and more. So I need you to welcome with me none other than Dr. Roland Roberts the second. Hello, hello. Greetings. It's great to be with you, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you so much for accepting uh, this invitation. It is such an honor to have you on the Made to Lead Millions podcast. And it was such an amazing time to have met you before. So let's get down to business because I know people need, people need to know uh, someone like you and they need to know the things that, um, Many people feel like, oh, this, it makes me apprehensive (laughs) to uh, talk to someone, uh, to talk about politics, to talk about religion. It makes me nervous. Well, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. So (laughs) (laughs) thank you again for joining. And just with that, how was it growing up as a PK, a pastor's kid? Yes. Well, you know, I can tell you that, uh, you know, they say the two things we were always taught never to talk about, politics and religion, ironically, as it turns out, are probably the only two things we should be talking about, as they're the most important things 
in, uh, that consume our life, and uh, they affect our families, they affect our livelihood, they affect our ability to worship God in the way we see fit. So uh, it is interesting, the, uh, the great psyop that has been done on the American people to keep them from talking about the things that I think that ultimately matter. And if more people did speak about them openly, many of the things that they're frustrated by today would not uh, be in existence. So, you know, growing up in a pastor's home, uh, I, I love my parents. My, my father uh, was a past, has been a pastor at the same church for about 40 years, administrator yeah. of the Christian school. It was a small Christian school. Uh, when he took it in the 80s, the church was running right at 100, and there were 42 kids in the school. So when I mean a small church, it's not like a mega church kind of thing. It was a church in a holler in West Virginia <laughs> and uh, where I grew up. So, But I'll tell you one thing about uh, growing up in the home that I did. Both of my parents were first-generation believers. Uh, all four of my, I lost all four of my grandparents to alcohol. Uh, and, and, uh, and so both of them met uh and they knew they did not want the kind of homes that they both came from so they sought the lord they wanted to to have a god honoring home and uh, so they were hard on us but i can tell you one thing uh i never one time saw them lose their temper with each other or with us mm. i never one time heard a, a, a bad word come out of my father's mouth you know, wow. we got to see him 24-7. We got to see, you know, when the phone rang at midnight. We got to see whenever there were problems in counseling other families and wayward youth and, and so forth and, and marriages. And he would he would help teach through that to help us try to prevent some of those problems from happening in our life. And I saw him hit, hit his, hammer, his finger with a hammer, and, mm. uh, and, and nothing flew out of his mouth. Wow. You know, I saw the real man. So I saw real Christian, uh, not, uh, you know, what a lot of people see today. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I saw real Christian, and that I think that is what helped me most, because as you learn establishment institutions of religion, just like established government agencies or anything else, there's usually corruption, or at least things aren't as they appear. Okay. And a lot of people lose faith, whether it's in the church or whether it's in or government uh, or a, a company. The closer you get to the top and you see behind that curtain, and a lot of times people just get disappointed and they or they get hurt. And uh, fortunately, I was very blessed with a with a godly heritage that it was the real deal, and and I'm so thankful for that. Wow, that is such an amazing um, life story, uh, and I appreciate that being a first generation pastor, um, knowing, you know, not knowing God calling you, but when he called me and I answered, uh, that's just so powerful to me. And I love to hear, um, you know, that there are other people out there like me. <laughs> so that yeah. is amazing. Now I want to ask you, um, when did you know, um, or when did you take the step Toward salvation, was there a struggle? What what was it? What was that thing for me? I lost my job and I mm -hmm. searched for the Lord. What was that thing that caused you to really mm. reach out and, and get saved? Yeah, how old were you when you trusted Christ? When that happened to you? I was twenty eight. Twenty eight. Uh, so interestingly enough, I I trusted Christ as my Savior when I was five years old. Uh, now you have to understand I was in church nine months before I was born. <laughs> All right. They didn't miss, uh, with my dad preaching and, uh, and we never missed. We didn't miss Sundays even for vacation. Your, your vacations were, you know, leave Monday morning and you come back Saturday cause you don't miss church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and so that was kind of the way we did it. Uh, of course we, we couldn't afford a whole lot. So when I say vacations, that meant to go see the relatives, you know, a couple hours away. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, but I do remember clear, clear as day. It was a Sunday, and I remember the the preacher. My father was actually sick that Sunday night, mm -hmm. um, and and I remember the preacher preaching on on heaven and hell, and I just knew that was a place somewhere I did not want to go, and I was convicted of of my sin. I knew, uh, I just understood right and wrong in that in that moment. The conviction of the Holy Spirit got me. And I just recognized in myself 
right and wrong and that I needed a savior. And so it, I, we got home. I was talking to my mom about it on the way home. And she said, let's, you know, we're going to talk with, with your dad when we get there. And, uh, and so uh, my dad was actually still ill on the couch, but he was right there. My mom and I knelt at the recliner and uh, she walked me through the scripture, made sure I understood what I was doing. And then I prayed and trusted Christ as my savior. But I'll tell you, Crystal, um, I continued through my life, you know, my my formation years Mm -hmm. in a Christian school, Mm -hmm. in youth group, going to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night, Mm -hmm. okay, plus chapels at the Christian school during the week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or, Mm -hmm. you know, different days, and uh, revival services several times a year, week-long, not the three-day short things that they do now. I'm talking about the (laughs) week-long or two-week-long kind of deals. Right. right. That's the way I grew up. And then I got to college, Bible college, and mm-hmm. uh, and, and thinking I would go into ministry mm-hmm. and had to get a job that paid for college because I was going to pay my own way through and ended up finding out that I was gifted in business. Wow. And then I started investing in real estate with the headway I was making in corporate America and then I ended up doing so well in real estate as an investor uh, that I did not have to work. And I just did that business full time. Wow. And uh, even while I was in college and acquiring numerous properties, uh, millions of dollars worth of properties. And but that started taking me down this path. And the only thing I wanted from the age of 19 was to be the CEO of a billion dollar company. And I was right. so laser focused on that. But that took me a direction that made me cold. Uh, mm-hmm. lukewarm towards the things of God. Okay, mm-hmm. so I, mm-hmm. I knew him. I knew that I was a Christian. I knew that I had trusted Christ as my Savior. But I wasn't, like, in love with him. I wasn't living for him. I wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't sold out, surrendered to him. It was just, yes, I want to be in church because that's a good thing to do. I'm not really going to, like, read my Bible each day or read mm-hmm. spiritual books or devotionals or, you know, I mean, we're not going to get to that level, but, you know, Sunday morning is good. It, it was, that was the framework I was living in. Mm-hmm. Um, and what happens is when you live in that lukewarm space, yes. you're able to justify a lot of things that aren't right. And oh, that's yes. what I did, especially as a CEO. And I started mm-hmm. making good money and I started living, living like it. And it wasn't until 2015, September 15, 2015, on Tuesday morning, it was around 1030, between 1030 and 11 o'clock in the morning. And I'm telling you, that is the moment that I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I mean, lock, stock, and barrel, he had all of me. I didn't care if I ever made a dime the rest of my life. I didn't care if he took me the very next day. I was his. I didn't want to live for myself another day. And that was the day my life turned around. Wow, that is amazing. I love that, um, that you can say exactly when it happened. And, and I love that because God does just that. He allows us to remember the moment that we surrender to him. Thank you so much for giving out such a personal um, and, and heartfelt moment. Um, and that means so much to our listening audience to know that there's somebody that knows right from wrong. Uh, There's Mm. somebody that can lean and depend and get a prayer through to our heavenly Mm. father. So that is amazing. Now let's talk a little bit about faith and politics. I'm I'm Mm -hmm. whispering. (laughs) 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 I'm going to whisper that. Faith and politics, how do we separate the church and the state? And should we? And but I've read um some documents like the the Declaration of Independence, and it sure sounds a lot like God in there. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. let you um tell me what you think about faith and politics in church and state. Sure. Well, I'm glad that you asked that because there's a broad misconception even among Christians and believers today in America, uh, they believe that there's supposed to be separation of church and state. Uh, both Americans believe that and Christians believe that. They'll even quote that as if it is in the Constitution. And mm. it's, it's 
really embarrassing for them, um, and I don't want to be condescending, but I do want to help educate people that, uh, first of all, the separation of church and state never appears in the Constitution. Those words actually appeared in a private letter uh, mm. from Jefferson uh, to the Danbury Baptist Association uh, uh, in New England, who was afraid that the government was going to persecute them because they were a religious minority. The Baptists were such a minority, uh, and they didn't want there to be a state religion. That's why the Constitution, in the, in the very First Amendment, it actually specifies it, you know, with the freedom of speech, but that mm-hmm. they cannot infringe, they cannot establish a national religion, which is mm-hmm. exactly what they escaped in England with the Church of England. You know, back in, in, in those years, and in most empires, actually, in human history, there was a, a, a church religion, uh, yeah. or a state religion. There mm-hmm. was an approved church, th- just like China. You, mm-hmm. This is the one that you can go to, and you are safe, and you, you're fine. You can't have any other theology or any other faith. Mm. Um, that's illegal uh, because yeah. that threatens our power. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, we, mm-hmm. we can control the bishops in this uh, denomination, but we can't over here, so we make those illegal. And so the, the Danbury Baptists were starting to get concerned with some of the conversations that were happening in Washington, thinking, you guys are, they're going to start doing to us here what we escaped in England. And mm-hmm. Jefferson was trying to put their mind at ease and say, look, I know that you guys are the minority uh, here, uh, but you're not going to be, uh, we're not going to make the Baptist doctrine illegal, um, and, and we're not going to persecute you or put you to death, which is what was happening in Europe. Yeah. So, uh, that's where he said, don't worry about the government interfering with the church. Here's what Jefferson and all of the founding fathers knew, mm-hmm. even the ones that did not trust him as their Lord or Savior, still recognized that God governs in the affairs of mankind, and mm-hmm. even if they chose not to practice a personal faith in God, they knew they needed God's blessing on this country for a nation or an empire to succeed. And that is why even people who did not believe to take Christ uh, or believe in him put and agreed unanimously on the currency that we all still use to this day, yes. in God we trust. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so separation of church and state, net-net, is the government is supposed to stay out of matters pertaining to the church, and but that does not mean God is not supposed to be in government. Here's where also the confusion is. Uh, separation of church and state is a, is a wrong way of even stating it or looking at it. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't want, uh, I'm not trying to be, bring a theology to the White House. Okay. What I'm trying to do is bring God back in America. Come on. There's a difference between uh, trying to hold up a religion and say, I want to convert everybody to this brand of doctrine or this religion. What I'm saying is that righteousness exalts a nation. That's a promise. Also, the contrary to that is sin has reproached any people. And, but that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We must acknowledge God in America for his blessing to come back. You know, we're talking about scientific breakthroughs. We're talking about how to, how to beat cancer. Yes. Most All of us have lost loved ones to cancer or to uh, different health ailments. That uh, There are several things that if we had just obeyed God or acknowledged him mm-hmm. uh, and not taken him out of the schools and not t- taken him out of uh, government and not take kicked them out of America for all intents and purposes uh, in the early 70s, then yeah. many of the things that we experienced, autism didn't part, uh, pop up until, you know, really the late 80s and early 90s. ADHD was not a thing until the mid 90s. Yeah, absolutely. And not. many of the things that we're diagnosing our children with today did not exist. Now, we can say it's the soil erosion. We can say it's the food supply and it's a synthetic food and we can say it's vaccines. And it's yes, 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 and yes. But you know what it is more than that? It is we stopped acknowledging God as a nation and our leaders stopped acknowledging God. And that is what's turned it. Because we the promise is that when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. They yeah. may not even know why their lives get better when I'm in the White House. They may think it's because of policies. They may think it's because of good governance. But what we know 
far beyond those matters is that is it is just the blessing of God that their family yes. prospers, that their family is in health. Yes, I love it. We need to bring God back to America. I love it. For those of you that are listening, we are talking to presidential candidate Dr. Roland Roberts II. So please make sure right now that you go to his website and make sure that you support him. Check out his videos, his values, and the expertise that we are learning that he has on tonight. Make sure you do that. Again, we're listening to Dr. Roland Roberts II, and make sure you go to his website. Look him up now. Now, Dr. Roberts, my next question for you is, speaking of the videos, and I've, I've you know looked at several things, and I've listened to you, let me... Let me hear a little bit about education. Tell me what you would like to do with education in America. Well, the education system is broken. Uh, it's it's not serving anyone that it's supposed to serve. Uh, so everything from our youth to the student loan crisis. And uh, uh, one of the things I kind of backed into some of the solutions, like with anything mm-hmm. when you're running a company, uh, you look at the outcome or the objective and the goal, and then you, you reverse engineer what the solution is. So first of all, I'm not trying to solve today's just today's problems with today's thinking. So I have to look at, say, especially when you're trying to steer a ship as large as the United States of America and our budget. And so I look to see what does America need to be to survive until the 21st and, uh, 22nd century if the Lord tarries, what kind of a nation, what has to be put into place so that our children and our grand- grandchildren uh, can prosper and serve the Lord in a, in a free country? Uh, what does that need, what needs to happen? And the education system is bedrock foundational mm-hmm. to that. Uh, so a, a few things that need to happen. And when you, just like with any system, when you fix the right one or two things in the system, there's a lot of ancillary benefits that happen. What we have to do is overhaul education by having the high uh, college bachelor degrees run parallel to the high school years. Now, it's not a foreign concept. There's there's many states right now, juniors and seniors are already taking college courses. Uh, Some even you can get an associate's degree by that. What I'm saying is we need to back it up further and ninth through 12th grade uh, will be your high school courses in the morning. We need to extend the school day. Experts will, will review it and tell us, but let's just say for purposes of this conversation that the school day is extended till 5 p.m. So, you know, not, uh, eight, 8 to 12 is uh, high school, 1 to 5 is college. Excellent. And so they graduate uh, at 18 uh, with both a bachelor's degree, which means there's no need for student loans at that point. Uh, okay. because it was part of the public education system. Uh, it means we don't have to have all of the, the uh, tens of billions of dollars that goes into uh, university upkeep across the country every year because we're using the same facilities for both sets of instruction, high okay. school and university. Furthermore, a lot of the wrong ideology is happening at the university level, so it will actually help America get back on track because we're, they're not being indoctrinated by uh, uh, by psyop uh, psyop wars and so forth in our educational institutions, but there's two other practical outcomes I want to point out here that I think sure. will really excite people. Number one, uh, most of the teen pregnancies and uh, suicides from in drug use occurs between three or two thirty and three o'clock and five p.m. or six p.m. when the parents get home. So wow. by extending the school day. That allows for better supervision. It will help the mental health for our youth, number one. Second of all, the most affected uh, person by the school day ending early are mothers because a lot of them don't want to take jobs um, that would be higher paying job, higher responsibility jobs because they want to be able to leave early to be able to be with their children so they don't become a statistic. And so that is playing a part into women's pay not being at the same level because they're not able to take many of the same roles that pay higher because of this. So women and mothers are going to benefit tremendously from that move. The children are going to benefit tremendously because uh, of their mental health. 
and, uh, and, and being supervised. And then also what this does to the economy, what this does to pay, up, pay off our national debt is huge. Right now, people are worried about Social Security. How do we fund Social Security? Yeah. How do we fund Medicare? Uh, you know, how, does, how do these social programs continue for decades to come? And I can tell you, this is the solution. And I yeah. don't hear anybody talking about solutions other than increasing the budget, but they don't talk about how to pay for increasing the budget. But the truth is, right now, people graduated 18. They might go straight into college, but a lot of times they take a couple years off. Uh, yeah. Then they go into college. They cram four years into eight years. So now they're 28 years old when they get out of high uh, college, graduate college, between 26 and 28. They're, they don't enter the workforce right away. Many of them, you know, take a couple of years to go find themselves. And, you know, bottom line, they're 20 to 30 years old and still sleeping on mom's couch. And so, and then they go out and start their career at 30, 29 and 30 years old. And, but with what we're planning to do in our education program and strategy, it, they actually go, because they have their bachelor's degree, they're able to go or trade certificate and vocational yes. school uh, from high school, going right into the workplace at what? age 18. We yeah. literally get 12 years of productivity per person uh, more uh, back into the economy. But yeah. the greatest thing about this to me is we are built to work. Humans yeah. need to keep moving. That's why people, uh, a lot of times they die shortly after they retire because they, if they just stop after they've been working their whole oh, life, that's... you've got to keep your mind active. Well, guess what? By, by them getting into the workplace right at 18, Yes. They will live because they're so depressed because they weren't doing anything with their life. College is not a is not work in that sense. We yeah. need to be more than just the education. So we believe that it has a lot of benefits, um, and it takes care of the student loans. We actually are yeah. going to use a lot of the public endowments uh, that taxpayers funded anyway and has been growing on taxpayer dime. We'll use that to settle the debt on student loans and stop issuing and guaranteeing those federally. Uh, so it cleans that up and yeah. gives us a right way forward. Wow, I love that because I know so many single mothers that it's very difficult for them to pay for after school care. And yes. by extending the time in schools, that can also um, add more jobs in the school system because you will need more help yes. and supervision so that helps the economy as well so i love that i love the fact that single moms will be able to actually work a, a job to where they can afford to not be on housing or you know or need yes. all the extra governmental help to subsidize um, the care of their children. So that is an excellent, excellent policy. I look forward um, to seeing that in the future, in our future. That's amazing. Now, can I ask you about, um, I'm, I'm, we're in, I'm in Texas. And so uh, not too long ago, there was a, a shooting in the Allen outlet. And mm -hmm. so, Guns are a serious thing. What mm -hmm. what can you say um, to us, to our listening audience, about um, gun violence and guns in America? Well, the, the yes, it, it's horrific. Uh, what it is is it, it it should be an alarm bell. These are massive alarm bells that are going off every other day, seemingly uh, with senseless shootings and killings. America has a character problem. The mm. problem is that the problem is that we the breakdown of the family. Yes, there are mental health things, and yes, nearly every single one have been on one of the same three mental health uh, uh, antidepressant medications. Mm -hmm. In every single mass shooter scenario, they've all been on one of three particular mind altering drugs uh, that were meant to address depression or schizophrenia or or uh, some other mental illness. But mm. that aside. The mm -hmm. deeper systemic issue uh, is that the family unit is broken in America. That has been proven over and over scientifically and through studies. That is what is the leading cause of violence in America. Now, mm -hmm. regardless of the weapon, uh, whether it's yeah. domestic assault, uh, which is obviously using with your hands or an mm -hmm. object, um, but 
it, the breakdown of the family is the problem ultimately, it, and it's a sin problem, it's a heart problem. But um, what one of the things that I want to do as president is to strengthen America's families. This also addresses prison reform uh, yeah. because they, these really go hand in hand, and they disproportionately it, it disproportionately affects the black community. Uh, when you look at the incarceration rates, for example. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that goes back to, once again, the uh, number of single uh, uh, fam- uh, single parent homes. Yes. And uh, so when we strengthen marriages, marriage is hard. It, it you know, is. I love my wife, and, and, and I will say that she is the easiest woman, I think, in the world that, to be married to. She's just the sweetest, <laughs> kindest, <laughs> gentlest person. <laughs> but I still know that it's hard. Uh, yeah. At least it's hard for her, right? Because uh, to be married to me, uh, so I'll say it's a one-way street on her side. But she's the easiest person. Uh, but it's but you have to you have to put the other person first. We don't live in a society where we put anybody first but ourselves. Okay, right? And yeah. so that makes marriage uh, virtually impossible uh, unless you just have a, a transaction. But yeah. marriage is supposed to be so much more than that because it's supposed to be representative of Christ in his church. Yes. The whole point of marriage it, it, it was it is an institution ordained by God just like the family. The, the yes. family and the church uh, are his institutions and and he has he has also recognized government as the other uh govern as an institution uh but the two ordained by God are church and the family. That's yes. why we believe in parents rights. That's why we believe you get to decide what's best for your children how they are educated, what they should be learning, um, and, uh, you know, so forth. I, I'll tell you uh, one sidebar on that, on mm-hmm. what they should be learning. Our education system, our our high school diplomas are equivalent now to a bachelor's degree. Excuse me, an eighth grade education today is equivalent to a bachelor's degree in 1940. We've wow. continued to dump down our education because the you, the school system's only got paid if they moved the people up, so they had to keep lowering the standards. Uh, they, mm-hmm. they, they, and, and so it had an opposite effect. So they gamified it, uh, which has produced a generation. Uh, they're, you know, Chinese, uh, Chinese people, uh, students are learning engineering starting in sixth grade and, you know, metaphysical physics in, in, in seventh and eighth grade. Things wow. that we don't even study, even unless you perhaps major in, in uh, physics or theoretical physics uh, in, yeah. in college. Uh, so it, it's we 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 were training people not to think, but okay. to memorize tests, yeah. and so that they would be good factory workers and not question authority and don't question your line boss. You just go stand on the factory floor and do what you're told, and yeah. that was what the way the education system has. But that's it, it, that and the idea of you are a god to yourself. You you look after you, numero uno. You are the most important. That's why, as a uh, running for president, I'm not saying here's everything I'm going to be able to do for you, and I'm going to change your life. And the day I get become the president, everybody in America is basically a millionaire. And what else can I give you? What I'm trying to say is, look, if we all come together and we have the right uh, way of thinking and the right world view, and we have a vision for America, if we work together on this thing. We can actually leave a great America for our children and grandchildren. They'll look back on on this and say, you know what? They kind of put their own ambitions. We are still ambitious, but they saw the greater good. And that is what I hope to inspire America with. Yes. And and you've inspired me, definitely. I am so inspired. And when I think about what you stated with education and it also makes me think about how that will help um so that the kids are not wayward they're still getting um instruction and direction and supervision that will also also help with um juvenile delinquency that will also help you know that will also help with the the straight from school to prison and so i think what you're mm-hmm. saying, it has a trickle of effect for the better instead of the worse. So I love that because um, I, I, it just goes well with even, you know, coming against gun violence, because if we focus yes. on the family and our mental health will 
advance. So this if is I a- just focus on the guns, Crystal, if yes. I just focus on the object, yes. um, then I'm going to lose the war. It, it's kind of like when they just focused on the drugs. We, it is illegal to have opioids. It's illegal to have fentanyl. It's illegal to have cocaine or, you know, the different drugs. But they are, they're prolific. How yes. can they still be prolific if they're illegal? Right. You know, so me, make, me making something illegal is not going to keep people from getting high or keep them from using, uh, uh, taking a weapon and killing someone. Cain killed Abel with a rock, you know? Yes. Uh, yes. I mean, it's not the... Now, that being said, I don't want everyone driving tanks, right? right. But that's not the issue today. That's not what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, we want to, the, the, the real problem... By the way, the people who just want to just ban certain guns, yes, it's because that is easier to do and make it look like I'm doing something about the problem than to yes. solve the real problem. The real problem takes time. The real yes. problem takes money. The real problem, it, it, it takes uh, longer to get an immediate effect. So it's easier to ban something than it is to fix a marriage and to encourage uh and to help families and to put in programs and, and, and it kind of goes into abortion and other things. You got yeah. to really be vested in helping families, helping yeah. young mothers, helping, you know, uh, uh, how to resolve conflict. And, yeah. and, you know, you could, you could go back and talk about some of these things, even in school. That's what I'm saying. We're educating on many of the wrong things and, and not educating on what they actually need to be taught. Absolutely. I totally agree. And I want to touch on something because when you when when I think of family, I think of unity. And when 9-11 happened, um, you saw America come together and Mm. you saw so many people um, in the midst of tragedy. And I don't want America to be tragically unified. But can we before any tragedy comes, can we be unified? And I, I think what you are doing with education and putting God back in America, that's all a part of getting to a space and a place of unity. And so saying that, um, we've seen a lot of hurt and pain, you know, since George Floyd, since COVID, mm-hmm. all, the, all the, you know, um, fires and everything what can you say um in regards to unity and and just americans coming together you know i I, you you asked the right question and the problem is questions are the answer so most people are asking the wrong question which leads to the wrong solution right Uh, but this is this is the right question is how can we unify we have to unify or we will not survive as a nation uh, and, and by the way, we don't have to just, nobody wants to live where it's just hatred and vitriol all day, every day spewing from, from the news. And, you know, what I hear on the news, and then I can go to just about any restaurant and interact with people of all, you know, uh, races and cultures. Mm-hmm. And I, it doesn't, it's not the same as what they're telling me it is, but right. then there are systemic issues And it just goes back to America has a character problem. We have to fix the character, our character as a nation. But, you know, how can you fix the character whenever you've got a government who says, do what I say, not as I do? Because we do so many corrupt things to our own people. America, look, I mean, we already, you know, had a government agency take the life of a sitting president decades ago. We've already had, you know, issues with misinformation and disinformation over COVID and over vaccines and over Benghazi and uh, over Iran-Contra or over the uh, uh, different uh, weapons sales that uh, that the CIA has done to to create wars and and, and back rebels in different countries or to arm the Taliban that we then ended up having to fight uh, in a war on terror, you know, just a few years later. Uh, it's, It's not as complex as people think. It's we have to do right by our own people, and we have to do right by other nations, and we have to honor our word. Uh, The problem is America doesn't do that. We say to other countries, 
uh, you do this and this, and then we'll remove the sanctions. They do this and this, and we move the goalpost and say, well, now you got to do this and this and this, because you didn't really do that the way we wanted it to done. You, you, you did it, but not the way we wanted you to, so we're going to add this and this. They do this and this, we move the goalpost again. That does not garner goodwill among anyone, right? If you were a parent doing that to a child, at some point the child says, that's it, and they come after you, <laughs> right? They're like, I've had enough, forget it. You're, 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 you're stringing me along. By the way, if you went to work tomorrow, and let's say you were a commissioned salesperson, and mm -hmm. the boss said, if you hit $100,000 in sales this month, you're going to get a $10,000 bonus. So you've right. skipped, you skipped meals with your family, dinner time with your family, to stay late at the office. You uh, missed your, your, your daughter's dance recital, and you missed your, your boy's uh, t-ball game. And, you know, you're really working hard for that $10,000 bonus. And the last day of the month, the boss goes, well... I'm going to move it. It's got to be $125,000 in sales in order for you to get it. You're going to lose it on them. Well, right. that's what we do on a regular daily basis to people in countries. And, uh, and, and we have to start doing right by American citizens again and right by the people of the world. So we have to unify. And I'll tell you, because of the problems, because of the, uh, the systemic issues that has created division, and, mm -hmm. and, and people want us divided because it is easier to control the masses. The only yeah. way a handful of people can control the masses is if, is if they are fighting each other. Yes. The, uh, the establishment politic uh, politicians are all close friends. Mm. It's the people that are divided. I remember uh, the first time I ever learned this <laughs> was when I was so shocked when I found out that the Bushes and the Clintons were family friends. I was what? so shocked because, you know, I was just a small-minded boy from the holler in West Virginia, and yeah. I just saw what I saw on TV and thought it was gospel truth. I mean, it was the news saying it. Right. And, uh, and so when I thought, wait, there are people who won't talk to each other at Christmas time because one's for Bush and one's for Clinton. Yes. But, 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 but they had just had Christmas dinner together. Wow. Like, they, what is happening? And right. so when I started seeing these kind of things, then I started to understand. And by the way, the point's not that they should hate each other the way the media divides people to hate uh, for Democrats and Republicans to hate each other. The yeah. answer is for the rest of the masses to be just like them and get mm -hmm. along and, and work together. I was on the U.S. delegation to South Sudan the last several years, yes. and uh, it was half Republican and half Democrat. And mm -hmm. I remember, you know, uh, being in a motorcade with Chelsea Clinton's mother-in-law, delightful lady, former congressman, congresswoman. And, uh, you know, we had, a, we had a lot of good, great conversations. We're not enemies. We're American citizens. We're friends. We're people. We're all of one race, the human race. And, uh, and, and, and there's, you know, if people don't get along here, I mean, just think about what heaven's going to be like. I mean, oh. it's people from every <laughs> tribe and every tongue, you know. So I do believe, though, that we can unify uh, that's why I want to unify around the idea that America needs God, because even people who don't believe in God yeah. understand and want someone uh, just like our founding fathers understood. Yeah. Some of them did not believe in God, but they knew they needed his providence uh, okay. in this land. And so mm -hmm. I believe that that is the highest calling. People cannot even unite around the flag today, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's yeah. a division even around the flag of the United States of America, unfortunately, but there is. So we yeah. can't even all unite around that. But we can unite around the, our need for God. Not that we're going to be something, not that we're going to be some great Christian, not that we're just that we humble ourselves and say we need him. Amen. And I love that because that's why I had to go back to 9-11 when I saw people mentioning God, people coming together, people helping one another. And that's what I would love to see in America on a daily basis, not just at the time of tragedy. So we're almost out of time. Crystal, let me tell, let me tell you this uh, about that. Mm -hmm. Ironically, to your mm -hmm. point, uh, when 9-11 struck, uh, mm -hmm. all planes, you know, between 9 o'clock and 9.17 and then again, uh, the, by 11 o'clock, the FAA had shut down the skies. By 4 p.m., all planes were grounded. Uh, by uh, And then on Wednesday, Bush and the White House, they said, we need to have a national prayer service on Friday, 48 hours from then. Well, they and uh, they said, but we can't have one without Billy Graham. Billy Graham has to be here. 
he has to be here. He's got to be a part of it. And uh, but the FAA wasn't giving clearance for for a plane to get him there because he couldn't drive uh, because of his health. And uh, so they had to send a plane for him. But they were the White House was having trouble getting clearance. Bottom line, they got a plane uh, to him, and mm-hmm. for two hours, an mm-hmm. hour and a half, two hours, there was one plane in the sky wow. to carry one man that God sent to help heal America. I believe I am that man for 2023, the 2024 election, for such a time as this. I believe you are too. Y'all are listening to 2024 presidential candidate, Dr. Roland Roberts II. I need you to tell us, Dr. Roberts, your social media, um, let people know how to get to your website. Um, let people know, you know, hey, Dr. Roberts needs your help and your support. So, Dr. Roberts, if you'll give your social media information and your website, please, at this time. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you, we're praying that God would raise up an army of people who say, you know what, we need this voice in America and will support us, even if it's a dollar, if it's a, if it's seven dollars, if it's a hundred dollars. If it's a million dollars, there are ways that uh, you can participate uh, to help get this message out. And uh, you can do so at www.rolandroberts.com. It's, and it's uh, R-O-L-L-A-N-R-O-B-E-R-T-S. Just remember, Roland, it's two L's and no D, uh, R-O-L-L-A-N, Roberts.com. All of our social media, it's Roland Roberts. And uh, we'd certainly hope that you interact with us. We're, we're very active on it. And we don't post fluff. We're not just posting uh, memes. We don't do political speak. I think you'll actually enjoy it uh, and enjoy following our journey. Thank you so much. It's such an honor to have you on the Made to Leave Millions podcast. Again, to you wonderful listeners, thank you for listening in. I encourage you, go to RolandRoberts.com. Make sure that you support him. Click the link whether it's a dollar, five, seven, eleven, a million, whatever you want to um, support him with, because you're not only supporting Dr. Roland Roberts II, but you're supporting a push to bring God back to America. So thank you again, Dr. Roberts. You have a blessed and wonderful night. Kiss that baby son and your wife. And thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. My pleasure. Blessings to you. Thank you. You are listening to Journal of Slide Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X.